Jeff Van Gundy, our ESPN right all, yeah. NBA analyst. And he's been right all along he on this, been, saying this would be uh, non-competitive. Nailing it. So, Jeff, is there any chance? Uh, give, us, give us hope. Yeah. Is there any chance tonight that because the series has shifted back to Cleveland, it'll be a more competitive game? Well, let's remember, hope's not a great strategy. But I would say that, um, you know, they can play better. Uh, certainly, I think LeBron James showed us in the first half of Game 2 what he can do getting to the basket. I was a little puzzled uh, why it was so dramatic from the first half to the second half, uh, his shot selection. Um, but he wasn't at the rim at all in the second half. Uh, Kyrie Irving has to play better. And then, you know, defensively, they've got to find a way uh, to slow one of the two guys down, Durant or Curry. It can't be both playing at this uh, great level of efficiency. They've got to try to take one of the two guys and render him a little less effective. So if you're in that huddle as a head coach, uh, you're in that practice, you're running the practice, how are you doing it? Tell us, tell us what you think can happen on the court to try and slow down one of those guys, and who would you pick? Well, I'll be interested in seeing their, their lineup configurations. I know they say they're going to start the same way, uh, but J.R. Smith has had a struggle. Uh, last game in particular, people are talking about his you know, lack of offense. But he fouled two three-point shooters. Um, yep. They yeah. haven't rebounded the ball well. Like, if, if Golden State is going to turn the ball over like they did in the first half um, and you're not ahead, it's going to be hard. Like, everything in that first half should have set, pointed you into a first-half lead if you're Cleveland. It didn't. Um, but the rebounding game, the turnover game – so that'll lead, it lead to more shots. It, that's got to go Cleveland's way because Golden State is such a great shooting team that if they're going to also get more shots than you uh, and you're, you're going to get out-rebounded, uh, it's going to be really, really challenging. So um, you've got to take care of what you can, handle the ball, rebound the ball, and, and don't beat yourself with uh, poor choices and mistakes defensively. Uh, Jeff Van Gundy with us as we're talking about Game 3 of the NBA Finals here on Mike and Mike. I want to go back to something you said earlier because the stats bear it out, uh, in, especially in LeBron's so shot selection in Game 2. In the first half, his average shot distance in the first half was 3 feet. It was 17 feet in the second half. Now, is some of that just the way the game flowed and people missed shots and, and suddenly things were off and running and, and the defense was tightened up? Or is that what, a decision that he needs to make to, to attack the rim more? Well, I don't think he ever put pressure on that basket in the second half, not even trying to attack the lane. There were, I think, way too many possessions where the ball didn't play through him. He was sort of spotted up, and they were going to other people to try to create you know, their plays. To me, two years ago uh, when Kyrie Irving went out, we saw LeBron James basically on every play in the post, in a pick and roll, like, having to create. I think they're, that also slows the game down. Now, I, I saw where they said they have to play fast, and I don't think they do. I think they're good enough uh, to play at many different levels of tempo, and I think in this case, they're a little bit better. Their chances are a little bit better if it's more like the first two years of this series where it's more of a slugfest, where it's a defensive, grinded-out type of possession. And one of the ways to do that is with your offense. And I think uh, LeBron, besides attacking the basket, he could post more um, and try to use his strength backing down the taller but lighter Kevin Durant. So I think, I think that they have to make some adjustments offensively, not necessarily what they run, but to play at a tempo that would give them their best chance of – uh, having a chance defensively and having a chance to better win. We know the stars in, in this game and what they're doing, but how about a guy like Tristan Thompson? Two games combined, eight points, eight rebounds. Last year we saw what he was able to do in this final series. Why is he so less effective this year? 
Well, his greatest strength is, or his greatest strengths are his mobility defensively and his offensive rebounding. And they I'm giving Golden State great credit for the offensive rebounding because they, particularly Pachulia, to start a game, are hitting hard and hitting first. And they're not letting them get that athletic step gathered to get up on the board for the second shot. And then the mobility issue, uh, I, I think it's been harder for him this year to switch effectively onto Curry for whatever reasons. Curry's uh, more active, attacking, whatever it may be. And the whole difference, like, is that Kevin Durant's on the team. Like, that's, you know, if you want to say what's what's the difference, Kevin Durant, um, he's been he's been great for a number of years. He's playing great now, and Curry and he together form this potent duo uh, that's going to be very difficult to challenge. Well, but first of all, I, Jeff, I have to say, as someone who asks questions, I love the pregnant pause you give us before every yes, question. Yes, great. Means he's, he's deep in thought. You're actually thinking yeah. about the answer. We as appreciate that. It's something that's being blurted out, so we love that. And you mentioned Durant. You know, you said you believe that Durant and Curry may be the best duo of all time ever. Uh, why do you think they've elevated themselves to that level so quickly already? I think I said, or I hoped I said, I'm not sure even what I say now, but... Um, <laughs> Join the club, by the way. To say, <laughs> I was hoping to say one of the best ever, and... There's been some great ones, Magic and Kareem, Jordan and Pippen, Stockton Malone. You can go on. That would probably be an interesting discussion sometimes. But I think in th with this game, in this day and age, with these rules, uh, Durant and Curry together, their scoring ability certainly makes them one of the best offensive duos to ever play. They're, they're explosive they can score at every level on the floor. They get to the free throw line. They make free throws. So uh, I know some, I got, when I said it in the game, uh, I got some immediate feedback uh, from friends who, you know, what about this twosome or whatever it is. I even had an ex-player uh, reach out that, you know, is was a prominent MVP and, basically question my sanity so um but I, I think people like they don't for whatever reason they don't want to totally it's interesting to me i should say that right now golden state is like a media darling where people are trying to say this is the best team ever in many many corners and i think that's a that's a hard comparison because the game is different the rules are different um and i think we have a recency bias where we only remember best what we're seeing right now. Prisoners of the moment. We forget the Showtime Lakers, you know, et cetera. A lot of great teams. So, um, but I think there's other older people think any praise of these guys is like a knock at the Jordan Bulls or somebody like that, which I think, but we have to look at this. Uh, the Warriors over this three-year run, uh, have been absolutely off the charts. To set a record one year with 73 wins, uh, this year come back with 67, uh, you know, running, th running through the playoffs um, and making really uh, a mockery of, like, so many really good teams. I mean, it's, this has been very impressive. And I think if you don't acknowledge it, uh, you're making a mistake because these guys – have had this historic three-year run, and they're capping it off with a great playoff run so far. Yeah, I mean, this is what we're doing because the series hasn't been competitive. We're talking about LeBron James and the, and the list he's climbing, you know, with triple doubles and points in the finals, and we're talking about Golden State right now. What, what Vegas said they'd be favored against those 95 Bulls. Yeah, I'm not Magic so sure said about that, that his Showtime Lakers would sweep these Warriors. What rules are they so, playing under? So That's th what I would want. This is what we're talking about now. But as far as Kevin Durant, lastly for you, Jeff – 
is the Kevin Durant detractors are saying, listen, he was in a no-win situation. If they win the title, well, they should win the title. They have four All-Stars, and if they don't win the title, well, I mean, what a, what a, what a group of losers they would be to have that many great players and not win. What does this do for Kevin Durant if they're to close out this series for him personally? There was a guy on SportsIllustrated.com named Michael Rosenberg, I believe is his name, and he wrote an article yesterday that I think summarizes a lot and, and that this isn't a Kevin Durant problem. This is a little bit of how we go about evaluating athletes' problem. Uh, we assign greatness in, in a team game to, to team accomplishments. Like Kevin Durant now is elevated because – he in a championship? Are you kidding me? This guy has been great for many years. The difference for Kevin Durant from this year to last year is he's got better teammates. That's what this guy's whole Absolutely. point was in the article. That's it. Like Kevin Durant what has been great for many years. He's an MVP before. He took a young team to the finals against the Miami Heat. I mean, this guy you can whatever you can have your opinion about his how he came to a decision where he went that's a sports fan's right but i think what you can't argue is he's not different this year he's been great the only difference is is that he's got better he's playing with better teammates so i'm not going to look at him differently as a player i already thought he was one of the all-time greats uh, that he paired up with some t- better teammates. I don't think it does anything for, quote, his legacy, which I hate that word to begin with, but I don't think it's that. I think he made a a life choice that included going to the Bay Area to live. He made a life choice to decide who he wanted to play with, and he did it. But for me, I already thought he was a great player. Yeah, this just in, you're better when the players around you are better. It doesn't matter what sport you play. That always helps your individual performance. And hopefully the performance tonight by the Cavs, Jeff, will be better than we've seen in the first two games. Uh, good luck tonight calling the game. We appreciate you being with us. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff.